Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I want to talk to you about the Gemini meteor shower. Have you ever seen a shooting star flying across the sky? Well now's the time you might get lucky to see some because we are now in early December and as we approach mid-December we head towards the peak of the annual Gemini meteor shower and that means that when we get to about the 13th and the 14th of this month we've got a good chance of going out in the evening or into the early hours of the morning preferably of seeing some shooting stars flying across the sky most likely is if you do see one this month it will be a Gemini but what is a Gemini meteor shower well when the earth goes around the sun it moves into the paths of comets and, and asteroids and all sorts of space rocks as it goes around and those leave dust trails and it's the dust trails that when the earth passes into a dust trail those pieces of dust come flying into the earth's atmosphere and they burn up as they come into the earth's atmosphere and you see them flying across the sky you might just be lucky to see some and what they are is tiny tiny grains of sand but if you're lucky you might just see a massive fireball shooting across the sky because the Gemini's is really good for fireballs you might just be lucky enough to see a real screamer go across the sky I've seen loads of them in my time I've been watching them for about 10 years and I've seen some amazing Gemini's I'm just going to show you some pictures on the screen now of pictures of Gemini's I've taken down the years it's an absolutely amazing meteor shower now we have other meteor showers during the year the last major one was the Perseids back in August but the Gemini's is the best meteor shower if you ask me because you see more of them per hour of watching and they also tend to be a little bit slower as they move through the sky so they give you a better chance of seeing them now the thing about meteor showers is that they have what's known as a ZHR, a zenithal hourly rate and that means how many you would expect to see in an hour if the radiant, that's where the, jet, the, the meteors are coming from the constellation of Gemini, Geminids, Gemini was over your head and you could see all of the sky just look at the same part of the sky don't look towards the radiant and I'll tell you about that in a minute uh, look sort of to a darkest part of the sky that you can you can find now what I want to talk about is a radiant now of course they're called the Geminids because they come from the constellation of Gemini now there are two stars in Gemini called Castor and Pollux and you can't miss them the, the really bright stars that are called the twins and uh, the part of Gemini they're the heads of Gemini and you can see them quite easily in the sky now the best thing to do is to wait until the peak or close to the peak the peak is the best Th the night of the 13th into the 14th is when they're going to peak that's when you're going to get the most meteors and what you want to do is you want to go out and preferably as well you want to wait until the early hours that's when the radiant is higher the Gemini is going to be higher in the sky so you've got more chance of seeing meteors so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a good chance I'm going to go down to Lytham because it's away from here and I've got distractions and I've got all kinds of things in the way here obstacles and I want to sh give you a better idea of how to find the constellation of Gemini and how you can have a good chance of seeing these Gemini meteors so um, that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to head down I'm going to, be going to go onto the beach or maybe on the jetty we'll see but there's a nice view of the sky down there and I'll be able to explain to you a bit more about uh, how you can see these Gemini meteors so let's wait for it to get dark and next time you see me I will be down in Lytham okay so I'm now down here at Lytham uh, seems to be my favorite place at the moment I'm actually on the jetty now the as I mentioned before the jetty gives us a really really good um, view of the sky because we can come out onto the jetty and it gets us away from all these lights behind me can you see these are the uh, lights along the promenade of Lydon and uh, we're sort of almost all the way out on the jetty now and we've got a really really nice view of the sky it's coming up to nine o'clock and I can already see the constellation of Gemini I can see the two bright stars Castor and Pollux that I mentioned before and that's the area of sky where the Geminid meteors will be coming from that's the radiant so, so what I want to do now is I just want to put my DSLR on and I'm going to point it towards that area of the sky now just to give you an idea of where they are in the sky it'll give you an idea of where they're going to come from okay so I'm now pointing the camera back towards the sort of 
promenade of Lytham here. Uh, you might just be able to see the um, the windmill just over here, just off the shop there. Now then, can you see these two stars up here? The stars of Gemini. These are actually the heads of the twins. Castor and Pollux, these stars are called. So this is a constellation of Gemini. So this is the radiant for the Geminid meteors. Now, as you can see at the moment, it's quite low in the sky. If I just pan back down again, you can see there now, they're fairly low in the sky. And just to give you an idea of where they are, I'm looking sort of towards the east. It's early on in the evening. Well, I say early, it's about nine. It's coming up to nine o'clock. So if I pan across this way now, we might just be able to see the constellation of Orion. Can you see that? So I'm now looking towards Winter Hill. You can see a mast down there, the big red mast, and there's Orion. So that's a constellation of Orion. And Gemini is just currently to the left-hand side of Orion. Now, as this night moves on, things will change a little bit. But this is just giving you an idea of where the radiant is in the early evening. And we've already seen a meteor. We've already seen one. Yeah, we saw one uh, fly across the sky before and it made a long trail. And the reason why it made a long trail is because it was pretty much 180 degrees away from the radiant. If you're facing the radiant on the night of the Geminids, you're not really going to see long trails because you're looking into the direction where the meteors are coming from. So you will see Geminids, but they will tend to have shorter trails because it's almost like you're heading straight towards them. So the best thing to do, if you want to see them, the best way to see them is to look at a right angle. So I would probably look down here towards Orion. Orion's a good place to look because it's um, not quite a right angle, but it's, it's an angle away from the radiant. And uh, you might want to frame Orion in your shot and you get quite a nice shot. You might get some Geminids flying through Orion. That would look quite nice, wouldn't it? So there you go. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the constellation is quite low in the sky, but it's going to get higher up. Now, the thing is, I mentioned before that it's better to see the Geminids when the radiant is much higher up. Now, as you can see at the moment, it's quite low down towards the east part of the sky. So um, that's why it's better to see the meteors you have a better chance of seeing them after midnight when the radiant well it'll be uh, a lot higher up in the sky and you have a chance to see the meteors coming down all over the sky rather than just from one direction like that so that's why it's better to look for the geminid meteors after midnight in the early hours okay so i just want to talk about the zenithal hourly rate again the zhr of the geminid meteor shower now it has been said that uh, you can see up to 120 meteors in an hour, zenithal hourly rate. Now you have to take that with a pinch of salt because that means that the zenith, that's the point directly above your head, is where the radiant is and you can see all of the sky. Now that's not going to happen because the radiant is never going to be directly above our heads from where we are here. And also we're not going to be able to see all of the sky at one time. You can only really see part of the sky with, with your own eyes. You can only see maybe, let's say that you can see half of the sky with your own eyes. And I don't know what kind of camera lens you're using, but the wider lens you've got, the more sky you'll pick up. So really, the zenithal hourly rate is just an indicator of how many meteors you would see if you could see the whole sky and the radiant was directly overhead. Now, I've kind of um, got it down to say around about 10 to 20 meteors per hour, which I think is pretty good really. And that's how many I would expect to capture on camera uh, from here. If you were somewhere much darker and you had a, a better view of the sky and the radiant was high, you might be able to uh, bump that up quite a bit. So when I was in Tenerife a few years ago, I would say that we saw probably about 50 to 60 per hour. So that was pretty good out in Tenerife. But then again, the skies are a lot darker there. And as you can see behind me with all these lights here, we're not going to see a whole lot of meteors this way because a lot of the meteors, the fainter ones, 
are going to be um, kind of, you know, the, the light pollution is going to be too much for them, so we won't see any that way. So we have to look out this way, behind me, this way. Can you see? There's nothing, there's nothing behind me. So this is where we would be looking, towards the south. So there you go, that's my little video on the Geminid Meteor Shower 2020, which is going to peak on the night of the 13th and the 14th of December. And as I said before, the best time to see them is when the radiant is nice and high. For us, that's going to be in the early hours of the morning. Um, now I hope that we're not going to be clouded out for it, as we often are. But we'll just have to wait and see. I'll probably go somewhere really, really dark to try and capture them if it's uh, nice and clear. Um, now we are under lockdown, so we can't just travel anywhere. I can't, I'd like to go to Wales or somewhere like that, but uh, I don't think that's going to be possible. But anyway, I hope I've given you a good idea about how to see the Geminids. I wish you luck if you want to go and try and see them. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button and also hit subscribe to see more videos like this one. And tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And I will see you again next time.